What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie. Um, today I got uh, part three of my reviewing and ranking Moe's archival concert release series, Warts and All. This is volume three. Uh, my kindergarten class cut my hair again. Uh, I get one haircut every year. It's my kindergarten class cuts it. We raise money for the San Antonio Food Bank. Um, uh, raised over $8,000. Uh, if you're interested in donating money, I'll put the link in the description in case anybody out there wants to help people get fed. Uh, there's a website, you can see pictures and all that stuff. But Plus, it's hot, it's summer, so it's really nice to do this every uh, last Tuesday of every year uh, since COVID. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's why I'm now like have no hair. Um, anyways, so we got a complete show from November 13th, 1998, about a month, two months, I think, after the release of their album, um, Tin Cans and Cars Tires. So we get a lot of those songs on here, or a couple of those songs, but they're not quite yet epic, or at least these versions aren't as maybe epic as they kind of sometimes would be. Um, three disc set uh, with a complete show plus some bonus material uh, hidden away uh, at the end of it. Um, disc one is, um, if you're not familiar, Mo Jam Band, they cover San Bernardino. I think they've covered, I think they've done another Zappa song. They definitely quote Inca Rhodes in the previous volume two. There's an Inca Rhodes co quote at the end of the song four. Uh, Chuck Garvey, one of the guitar players, would would dip into that enough times to make it a thing. Um, but yeah, so on this show, what we get is um, three discs. The entire first disc is the first set. And uh, interesting first set, only five songs. I mean, pretty much there's just this epic mammoth three song. I mean, it's like close to 45 minutes, I think, time-wise. Um, I don't know if I have the times written on any of these things. No, they are not, so don't know, but it's pretty long. Um, five songs in the first set. Opens up with a song, 32 Things, off their uh, No Doy album. Um, not what I like the song. I don't like the live versions of them because the middle jam thing, I think is pretty, just kind of doesn't go anywhere. It's kind of a, feels like a, like a, like a washboardy type, running in the same place type back porch, just everybody play an acoustic instruments jam. It's not an acoustic instrument jam thing, but it has that sort of bluegrassy, fiddly type vibe to it. That's not what it is, but I don't like this jam. It's like, Mo doesn't really have what I would call type two in the fish sense, but this is one I think they're most contained where it doesn't really go anywhere. It just becomes this sort of repetitive idea that just becomes sort of noisier and dronier and just has this almost hypnotic groove as it goes over and over again. Um, and as an opening song, it doesn't do it for me. A lot of times I'll hear 32 things, or if I've ever heard it dropped into like the middle of a second set or something, I think it provides a little more contrast to some of their more like linear narrative guitar solo bass jams. Uh, but I've never been a big fan of this song as far as the, the jam in the middle. So there's that. Uh, Nebraska, a song I love, love the hook, really nice little pop song. And then we get the epic Timmy Tucker, just your epic Timmy Tucker, um, a really nice solo from Chuck and then a solo from Al. And then we kind of dissolve after that. That goes on for like, you know, close to 20, 25 minutes, I think, uh, before we devolve into a nice CIA, a California, uh, really nice California. I love when California is buried between two songs. It works really well. And then when we come out of California, we, there's this nice little jam that eventually morphs into a moth jam. But if you know the song Moth, there's like usually a, a long solo section at the end, and then they return to the song for like a moth reprise. Sometimes they'll do like a playing in the band thing like the dead and drop the moth reprise in like a later set or, you know, open a set with it and drop the moth reprise at the end. Um, and there's a very definite like bass line that Rob plays on bass before they go into the, they drop back into the song. Usually like the solo will peak and peak and Rob's playing this like doo 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 kind of like coming at it from the back type baseline and then it stops and then they drop into moth it's like we she loves everything about life right in this one they go into that jam that normally concludes the moth solo but they haven't played moth yet but this jam goes into like the moth ending but when they reach that part where the solo would normally peak and they drop into reprise the song peaks they stop and then they go into the intro of moth and then we get a full-on moth 
really, really interesting section. By far the highlight of this entire thing. It's just an absolutely awesome, awesome, the California CIA into the moth jam, into moth is just spectacular. Um, really awesome. I think this is all three shows. We've had a Timmy Tucker. I think this is probably of the Timmy Tuckers, maybe the least memorable of the Timmy Tuckers, but it's still a good Timmy Tucker. But what really elevates this is that California into the moth jam, back into moth. Absolutely spectacular. Um, and that's all there is in set in set one, disc one, five songs, but the jam is healthy. Disc two, not one of my favorite sets so far in this series. It opens up with a plane crash. I like this on plane crash, but this is another one where the solo just, I don't think goes a lot of many, really many places. Um, sometimes they just get more intense and the buildup is more intense, but it's not like really an epic solo like some other mini, mini other epic solos that Mo has. It's just along with 32 things, a little bit of like... Um, waiting the song waiting for the punchline there are just certain jams that i think just don't really go any place from show to show or from performance to performance and plane crash is one of those um i like it when it opens a first set more i think it sets up a show better but we get it to open up the second set a self self-contained plane crash pretty long i like the song um just the jam doesn't do much for me uh, we get it through it all the way we get a high and low um, high and low is usually either played like just high and low the song or we get a nice long solo like a three or four minute chuck solo that will lead into another song we don't get that we just get a self-contained high and low we get a self-contained head with a short little jam in the middle i really like the head jams are kind of floaty spacey a lot going on but they're definitely they seem like they're just kind of in in space floating around um and a lot of these will like go on for a really long time and maybe even go into other songs. This one's pretty short, pretty self-contained. Album had only been out for a couple months. This is a relatively new song still at this point. Um, it would get better as the years go on. And then definitely probably the meat of this entire set is a, a really nice buster. Um, and then into a really nice jam at the end of Buster that is like a Century Deprivation Bank jam. They eventually go into sensory deprivation bank, but it's very much dealing with that kind of funky, quirky energy. And it's not listed on the back. Um, if you buy it, it just says Buster into seven. There's track seven is actually a jam. It's like a full on five to six minute sensory deprivation jam. Um, and then eventually there is a track eight that is actually sensory deprivation bag, which is a pretty short little standard solo. Um, good, but pretty short. Um, and then uh, that's the end of disc two. Um, probably one of my least favorite discs so far in this series, just because there really are, other than that jam between Buster and Sensory Deprivation, they don't really go too far out there. It's all pretty contained, pretty, everything's pretty tight. Um, it just, you know, if you like the songs, you'll probably like it better than I do. And I, I like the songs, I just want the jams. Um, and then disc three, we get a big world to close out the set. Love big world. Interesting to close out the set, another new song at the time. Uh, and then the encore is, they say they are running out of time, but still they give us a really nice tambourine and a really nice, a little more washboardy type vibe to the I Know You Rider, but a really strong I Know You Rider. Um, and then we get the hidden tracks, which are awesome. We get a Dr. Graffenberg, we get a four, we get a Rebubula. Really nice, jammed out. Um, 98 versions of these, these are from the show... I think the night before, no, a couple months before, um, 98, uh, Graffenberg has that pretty long, just nice jam. It doesn't, doesn't really go anywhere, but it's got a nice vibe to it. Really strong four, not as good as the one on volume two. And then Rebubula's got a really, really nice long jam in the middle. The middle of Rebubula is absolutely fantastic. The build up into the song is always fantastic. Um, probably the highlight of those three songs and maybe the highlight of the disc or the bonus tracks, the Rebubula. Um, but yeah, that's what you get on this one. I think so far of the three I've done, it's the weakest just because I think the one truly special sort of out of the box moment is in set one. It's that California into Moth. Everything else pretty much goes as you would expect something to go. Though that jam between Buster and Sensory Deprivation Bake is also pretty cool. So you got a good, I don't know, 10 to 12, 13 minutes that are like out of the box, spectacular. The bonus tracks are pretty spectacular. 
Um, if you like the songs, they're good performances of the songs. But yeah, uh, it's an interesting show. But yeah, if I had to rank it among the three I've already done, uh, it would be a number three. We're in order so far. One, two, and then three. Um, the one and two were pretty close. They both they both have some pretty epic jams on there. But I would say the number three is is the least interesting of the ones so far. And it's the earliest, interestingly enough, like uh, chronologically uh, time, when the concerts actually occurred. So anyways, that's all I got for Mo. I encourage you to check them out if you haven't. I think they're a fantastic live band, though, per this ranking. Start with Volume 1 and, and go from there. And Maybe you like the songs enough to like Volume 3 more than I do. But anyways, uh, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those things. And peace. Talk to you later.